been busy today. Been busy this morning. Been busy this morning. Because it was raining and school time. Already busy at school time. What time you on to? Five o'clock. <laughs> what time to start? Early morning. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Clitheroe in the heart of the Ribble Valley. It's got a funny name this place and uh, a lot of people make fun out of it. But it actually means Rocky Hill in Anglo-Saxon. Not a lot of people know that. Uh, this is Clitheroe, it's 35 miles northwest of Manchester population 17,000 people and according to the government it's the happiest place in the UK to live so we'll have a look around and see what's going on so we're at the top of Clitheroe Castle and this is the view around the town quite sensational really can see there at the bottom is the bandstand that's seen some incredible gigs and uh, concerts through the years one of the most famous ones uh, about 20 years ago they did a Pink Floyd tribute band I don't know if uh, anybody's watching saw that concert went to that concert it was what a fantastic night the band were absolutely brilliant um, covers band you know there was a tribute band but they were incredible the light show and all this grass down here that was just full of people whole place was absolutely buzzing and uh, there's been a few other concerts here down the years you've got usual brass band things and they've got the last night at the proms every year that they do here and uh, other one-off events uh, but in 1985 Marky Smith and the Fall actually appeared here um, I think it was broadcast live on Radio Lancashire which would have been quite a daring thing for them to do really it must be on late at night if uh, <laughs> if they had Marquis Smith on live but yeah it's uh, it'd be great to see some more concerts like that Pink Floyd one so that's the town there that's the side of town we're looking at there is Henthorne and Low Moor Kemple End there at the top of the screen as we come round there looking out towards the Trough of Boland and all the new houses new houses everywhere there's loads down there I don't know if you can quite make them out but uh, there's loads there loads and loads of new houses it's getting on a lot of people's nerves in Clitheroe and it's not because it's a local town for local people it's none of that it's simply because the infrastructure for these houses is all relying on the old roads which weren't designed to serve this many houses, this many people, this many cars. So you're constantly uh, in a very peaceful and charming town. You're constantly uh, coming across road rage incidents now. People being called d heads and horns being beat and things like that. Because people just want to get home and have the tea, but they can't because you know. They, for instance, those houses there, which I'm pointing at, they're served by this road here, which is basically single track road all the way down where all those houses are to feed that massive estate there and uh, the same things happen down Henthorne they've got I don't know 4,000 houses or something like that they've built and it's a single track uh, the road single track at the top of the road so obviously you know people get a bit fed up about it so so yeah if you uh, if you've heard that people in Clitheroe aren't welcoming to uh, people moving here and buying one of the new houses it's got nothing to do with you nothing to do with the people it's simply Lancashire County Council allowing this sort of development and just not putting a single road in place to feed any of it rant over and then this side of town we've got St Mary's Church there just above the tree and uh, probably the town's biggest employer works from uh, where that chimney is and that's Castle Cement huge uh, cement production factory there as we come round further still it's almost 360 degrees this up here it's uh, that's not the temperature that's uh, the angle that we can walk around so over there we can see you can make out the blue factory just before the trees that's another massive employer in town that's ultra frame at one time, I think uh, 
pretty much every conservatory on a new build house came out of that factory absolutely booming it was uh, and then you can make out Clitheroe Football Club just about I think you can only just make out the, uh, the uh, floodlights and then that's the most famous bit Pendle Hill world famous Pendle Hill people come from all over the world to visit this place for this hill people who are uh, into all the witchcraft stories and Pendle witches and all that kind of thing and as we come back round here we're almost back to where we started and looking back over towards Preston and Blackburn and just where it goes flat there on the horizon that's the coast we're heading out towards the coast anyway over towards Blackpool so yeah it's quite good oh I didn't mention this did I and there's a the castle so that's the top of the castle and this is the information about the castle so pause it now if you want to read just stuck at the level crossing but that's good because it means you're going to see a train that's one of the goods trains coming from castle cement and taking all the limestone somewhere else could be anywhere in the uk And when this gets through, we can continue with our journey. We're on Henthorne Road and this is probably uh, its greatest landmark at the moment. It's called Henthorne Road because the Henthorne family owned all this land about 700 years ago and had a great big manor just down the bottom of the road there called Henthorne House. And uh, yeah, that's where the name Henthorne comes from, the Henthorne family. So, uh, its greatest landmark today is the Chav Hut, which is uh, what we call it. And it's, uh, it's funny how they built this as a little shelter for the young people in the evenings. And then not so long after, they closed down the youth centre. So, <laughs> it makes you wonder if this is uh, his second best to have in a a fully functional youth centre with all the uh, nice staff and uh, games and pool tables and DJ decks and all the rest of the stuff that they used to have at Trinity. They've got this now. Uh, so it gets quite busy, obviously it's uh, school time now and everyone's at school. It's always a random object in here, I'm just trying to figure out what this one is. This is Ultra Frame, one of the biggest employers in town. And it's probably one of the best stories in town in recent times. This ultra frame factory started out, would you believe, from a garden shed in the 1980s. And the owner, John Lancaster, he set the company up and basically he just built such an amazing company in about 10 or 15 years to such an extent that this, this that we're looking at right now, this is the, uh, the second phase the main factory is over the road and it's absolutely enormous but they had to build this just to cope with the uh, the expansion of the business in the mid to late 1990s and John Lancaster he was the kind of boss that you would you would read about in a fairy tale I'm not exaggerating he was um, from day one he was paying over the odds to all his staff and it worked brilliantly because the staff just loved him and they came in and they did all the work and they did more and they stay for all the overtime that you can imagine and he treated his staff so brilliantly for instance at Christmas he'd give you a £2,000 bonus in the summertime you get a £1,000 bonus so you can go on holiday and it didn't just stop there when uh, when the company was doing really well Mr Lancaster decided that he was going to float it on the stock exchange so he got all the staff together and he had a meeting and he said look I'm not going to give you your summer bonus this year I'm going to invest it for you we're floating on the stock market and the stories I've heard about this the uh, the morning that they floated basically everybody who worked there suddenly had enough money to buy a house it's an unbelievable story the uh, they had a little phone box in the factory there's a big queue of staff just in tears waiting in this queue to phone their wives and tell them what's happened absolutely unbelievable it's just an incredible story John and Rosemary Lancaster spend all the time overseas now 
They don't spend as much time with Ultra Frame. They spend all their time building wells and schools and doctors in uh, African villages to help people out. They're absolutely unbelievable people and a real credit to the town. So right in the middle of Castle Street in Clitheroe is one of our most famous shops. Whenever a TV crew comes to Clitheroe, they always get this in the shop. Northwest tonight, Organada reports. And it was even in the Greatest Days film, the Take That musical. So this is Banana News. And this is Mr. Brass, the owner. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Are you alright? Yes, thank you, you too. I'm yeah. just, uh, just looking at your shop from outside, the most famous shop in Clitheroe, I reckon. Could be, yeah. It's got to be this or Cowman's, do you reckon? No, I think we're more famous than Cowman's. They're famous <laughs> for the sausages, we're famous for everything else. Yeah. Well, I was just saying, you're always, if uh, Granada Reports are here or North West Night, you're just always in the shot, aren't you? They always get banana news in. Well, it stands out with this nice bright yellow, black, yellow and black colour, it stands out on the high street. And there's, there's only one banana news, it's unique, so it has to be clever, so it's a good, good idea when they bring the photo in the film the shop, and they're always in clever, you see. And not everybody knows why it's called Banana News, can you tell us? Well, it was fish, fruit and veg from 1860 up till the early 1980s when the first supermarket in town came and hammered our trade. So we uh, struggled on a little bit there with fruit and veg and we eventually got established newspapers on there to reflect the both sides of the business with the name Banana News. And it's more an excuse based at Yellow and Black, so I knew that would stand out. And uh, everybody likes the name. We haven't sold fruit for a long time. Everybody loves the name, so the name just sticks out. It's a popular name. And you've been here a while, haven't you? Yeah, I've been here 50 years. 50 years? Now. Is it this year? Uh, 50th, yeah. I've yeah. Gone, 50, gone 50 years, I've been here now, yeah. And that was what, starting as a boy? Started working after school, scrubbing up and filling up the uh, fruit and veg and scrubbing up in the window after school when I were 15 or so. And I'm now the ripe old age of 65, oh. even though I don't look it. <laughs> you don't? Oh. Right. Yeah. Well, I'll let you get on. I'm going to go and roam around and have a look at some other stuff in Clitheroe. So, where do you recommend I go next? I don't know. I, I'm up Mystic Meg. I'm not Right, I'll see you later. All right. Cheers. So this is the new inn, one of the most famous pubs in Clitheroe. One of the most traditional pubs as well. No jukebox, no DJ, no tellies, just good beer. Nice room to sit in, comfortable. And they have folk nights in here, they have debates, they have uh, political parties meeting. Proper good traditional Lancashire pub. It's market day in Clitheroe. It's been a market here for the last 800 years since the Norman Conquest. Not quite on this spot, but the town has held a regular market for 800 years. Today it's very, very busy on the market because there's some clog dancers here. Clog dancers from all over the UK. Getting rapturous applause there. Let's go down and see what's going on. So I must admit, up until this morning, I've never even heard of clog dancing. It's never ever <laughs> been a thing that I've heard of before, but I've been on the internet and I've asked Jeeves, and it's quite an interesting story actually. So clog dancing originates, uh, it comes from around here, it comes from Lancashire and uh, the, the industrial north, and actually the clog dancing started out as a way for uh, miners They'd get to work in the morning, they'd put the clogs on, which was the PPE of the day. Basically all the miners would get together and they'd all have a big dance outside the mine shaft before they went into work. And the reason for that was not because they were in a particularly good mood about going down uh, underground for the rest of the day, pulling coal out of the ground. It was actually to warm up. So all the miners would be stood there and uh, they'd get the clogs on, ready for another day down the pit. And then they'd break into dance. And you'd think, oh, they must have really loved it down there, did a big dance before work, but it's actually a warm-up. They're actually uh, getting the body warm enough 
to go underground so that's where it actually uh, started from so it kept going for a few hundred years and then of course the Americans invented tap dancing it's kind of developed into tap dancing now but yeah this is brilliant I love things like this you know this has been organized by Clitheroe Castle Museum something completely unusual and uh, you learned something from it today and look at the atmosphere at the market it's brilliant Clitheroe FC are at home today, playing Avro from Oldham. Clitheroe play in the Northern Premier League West. And uh, for a town that's so small with 17,000 people, they do very well in terms of support, regularly getting 1,000 people, sometimes 1,500 people coming in to watch the game. Yes, 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 yes! The proof is in the pudding, and the pudding in this case is a football. Boof! Eat my goal! The goalie has got football pie all over his shirt. Swat! That was liquid football! Shit! Did you see that? He must have a foot like a traction engine! There's lots of events take place throughout the year. Uh, we've got the Clitheroe Food Festival and we've got the Jazz and Blues Festival that takes place. But without doubt, the biggest and most popular one is the Scooter Festival. It takes place last weekend every September and the nation's mods descend on Clitheroe. It's the annual pilgrimage to see all the scooters and all the mods. We have hundreds of scooters turning up uh, to take part in the event. Thousands of spectators, people coming from all over the country to take part in what's a weekend of just brilliant live music, great atmosphere, just a really good place to be. There's brilliant bands on in all the pubs in Clitheroe, such a good event for all the local businesses in town. And it's all organised by one man, Paul Derbyshire, local legend, and if you see Paul anywhere, you must congratulate him. You must tell him what a fa fantastic event it is that he does every year. The amount of work that goes into it, the road closures and liaising with the police and liaising with, uh, with the council and everything to get it on. But not only that, but to organise it for all the, uh, all the various scooter clubs around the country as well. It's an absolutely enormous task. He does it every year and this is the result. It's just a brilliant event. So well done, Paul. See Paul knocking about, usually in the new inn. Make sure you get him a pint. This is Castle Chippy, very famous chippy, not just for its haggis and chips, but also for featuring on this Ellis Lowry painting. It's called A Street in Clitheroe, and Lowry used to come to Clitheroe a lot. He used to love coming away from Manchester, get away from all the hustle and bustle, and just chill out. So, 1958, he painted this. Lowry also painted Church Street. This is called Church Street, and anybody from the town will know that that's looking up Church Brow towards St Mary's Church. This is a fascinating building. This is the Swan and Royal Hotel. Very, very famous building in Clitheroe. It's, uh, it's been here since 1786, so it's getting on a little bit now. And it's seen so much history, so many things have happened here. It's had some very, very uh, well-respected guests through the years. Uh, Winston Churchill stayed here, Gandhi, Miss Whitlash. It's also been the scene of the cotton riots in 1878. Massive problem in Clitheroe. Several cotton workers were killed in these huge riots that were sweeping across the north of England. Lots of houses were destroyed as well in Clitheroe. And it was on these steps of the Swan and Royal where the Riot Act was read to the local people, basically warning them. It was before the police existed, so if there was a problem like a riot or anything like that, the Riot Act was read and it meant basically we're bringing the army in, they're going to be coming in with horses and they will kill you. So behave yourself. The Swan and Royal is most famous, of course, for being the birthplace of the jet engine, a machine that's completely transformed the world as we know it. Uh, the deal was done in 1942. The bosses of Rolls-Royce, the bosses of Rover Motor Company and Sir Frank Little, who invented the prototype for the jet engine, they all met here 
had some lunch and signed a deal that they were going to go into business and produce the jet engine, which of course led on to us all being able to go on aeroplanes for our holidays. This is the Guardsman. This is Clitheroe Castle's war memorial. But what a lot of people don't know is that the entire castle grounds is actually the war memorial. Following the heavy losses in World War I, 260 people just from this area were killed in World War I. And the whole town came together. They wanted to, to really mark, you know, with a, a mark of respect, all of the people who'd lost their lives. So a fundraising activity took place. It took three years. It was called the Mile of Pennies. Mile of Pennies campaign. And uh, there's a picture of them actually fundraising on York Street back in 1920. So between 1920 and 1923, they got everybody in Clitheroe to give what they could, constantly fundraising, and they managed to raise £15,000 and they bought the entire castle grounds, and that was the war memorial. So although we've got this wonderful statue, it's not actually just this that's Clitheroe's war memorial, it's the entire castle. So there were 260 people killed in World War I, a further 72 people from Clitheroe died in World War II and in 1972 Lance Corporal David Moon local lad he was on duty in Northern Ireland and was killed by the IRA with three of his uh, three members of his regiment as they were going back to the barracks this is the River Ribble this is after about three or four days of pretty relentless rain and as you can see it's quite swollen and the worrying thing is it's uh, about a mile and a half two miles down the river it meets with the Hodder very close to Worley and uh, if it gets too bad if it gets up to where the benches are there I don't know if you can just make out the benches but if it gets up that high it causes big problems in Wally. We've had a, a number of floods over the past few years, so fingers crossed. Get nice sunny skies now, and this can just uh, calm down a little bit. And that's the difference 24 hours can make. Water's come right back down now where it should be. And the sun's out, it's nice and warm. We've got a family here having a barbecue. So this is Eddisford Bridge. In summertime it's known as Eddisford Beach because it's absolutely packed out with families from all over the Ribble Valley and a lot of people from Burnley and Blackburn come over here. Sometimes you can't see the grass here, so many people. It's a lovely spot. Clitheroe is completely surrounded by countryside and this is a 20 minute walk out of the town centre. This is what you've got. You've got Pendle Hill, you've got the castle just in the middle, St Mary's Church to the left and St Paul's Church at Lone Moor to the right there and what a view, 20 minutes away this is just north of Eddisford Bridge pub so any budding photographers who want to come and get some cracking shots from here this is the place to get your shots of Clitheroe and this is the view This countryside continues pretty much to Lancaster in this direction, right through the trough of Boland. And it's just an absolutely breathtaking countryside. And as I say, 10, 15 minutes from the town centre. This is Ribblesdale Cement Works. They've been on this site since 1936 and in that time, between 1936 and today, they've extracted over 500 million tonnes of cement from the two quarries that they've got here. It's an absolutely massive site, it doesn't look like it just from uh, standing at the gates here but this is an absolutely enormous site and they employ 200 local people which pumps 11 million pounds into the local economy here in Clitheroe so it's, uh, if you can get a job at the cement works you're doing alright because it's good pay, good conditions and it's quite a secure job as well
So on this site they do all the blasting and extraction, basically getting the limestone out of the ground and turning it into cement and then they even pack it all up here so it, as it leaves this site it's ready, it's all bagged and ready to go straight into B&Q so it's a big operation this. Annie. Uh, there must be some Lancashire hot pot in one of the clues. <laughs> one of the most exciting things to happen in Clitheroe in the 1980s was Treasure Hunt coming to town. Kendall Hill, right. That's very famous. This was at a time when we only had four TV channels and this was one of the biggest shows on there, Treasure Hunt with Annika Rice and she'd go all around the country in a helicopter and uh, one day she just landed on Clitheroe Castle Field. It's all supposed to be spontaneous and it looks like quite a few people were expecting her to come but this must have been a brilliant day in Clitheroe. If you remember this episode and you'd like to see it again it is on YouTube. Well it's not brilliant but it is there. Uh, just search for Treasure Hunt Lancashire. This is one of the most popular chippies in Clitheroe. This is Evergreen. This, uh, this chip here is so popular for its salt and pepper chips. One of its biggest fans was Will Young, the pop star. And uh, he actually dedicated his first single to this chippy. This is Calman's Sausage Shop. That's so hard to say. Calman's Sausage Shop. And uh, yeah, Brassy, Mr. Brass was saying earlier on that he thinks Banana News is uh, probably the most famous shop in Clitheroe. I think this is a close second because the late Queen used to get her sausages from here. And uh, it looks like the, the current king gets his sausages here as well. And uh, you can just see our MP in the photograph there looking a little bit hungover. So yeah, if you're a big fan of sausages, these guys know what they're doing. They've been here for 120 years and uh, they've got 70 different varieties of sausages that they make. We were talking a little earlier about Ultraframe and John Lancaster and his wife Rosemary who set up the Lancaster Foundation. And one of the things that they've done for Clitheroe is they set up the Clitheroe Skate Park. And this was, when this came, when this was built, about 15 years ago, this was like the most incredible thing, probably in the north of England. I don't think any town anywhere had anything as brilliant as this. And as you can see, it's just such a brilliant facility for the young people. It cost millions of pounds. It was absolutely groundbreaking. People were traveling from Scotland to come and, to come and use this facility, bringing the kids down. And it's just such a brilliant thing for the town that's been gifted by the Lancaster Foundation. And it's not only the skate park, which is enough on its own, but they've also given the grand to Clitheroe. This was the old cinema. It used to be a cinema from from the turn of the century, the last century, and uh, it, got into, it got into a bad state, really, and it needed doing up, and John Lancaster took it over, and look what he's done with it. He's just turned it into one of the best facilities in the Northwest. It's got an amazing recording studio in it. It's got the state-of-the-art theatre, and all kinds of community productions are put on here. Some bands come from all over the UK, some really big name bands as well. It's just such a brilliant facility for the town. And I just think, you know, imagine making the amount of money that the Lancasters did and then they just plough it all back into good causes and the hometown. It's absolutely brilliant. For such a small place, Clitheroe's produced a lot of celebrities through the years. Going back to like the 1950s and 1960s, the biggest star on British TV was Jimmy Clitheroe. Although he was hilarious and the top comic of his day, it's a very sad story with Jimmy Clitheroe because he was actually found dead on the day of his mum's funeral. He was only 51 when he died and he was absolutely devoted to his mum, lived with her, uh, looked after his mum after his dad had died and uh, they were inseparable. Coming up to date a little bit now, we've got, of course, needs no introduction, Michael Bispin, the UFC World Middleweight Champion. He's now one of the leading commentators of the sport as well. He is known globally. We've also got quite a few big name actors in Clitheroe. We've got John McArdle. People of a certain age will remember him as Billy Corkill from Brookside, although he's done many, many roles on different programmes for the BBC and ITV. The next minute the car's off the road, he's fallen onto the knife and there's blood everywhere. And Janet Battersby, we all know Janet Battersby, played by Vicky Entwistle, she's a local girl. That's a stupid name at all! So, all in all, the future's looking bright for all of us. Mm. And we're also lucky enough to have Malcolm Hebden, 
as one of our local residents. He played Norris Cole in Coronation Street. He's probably one of Coronation Street's most popular characters in recent years. You little raver, Norris. <laughs> Simon Entwistle's seen on TV a lot. He's a TV host, author and award-winning tour guide. His love for Clitheroe is unsurpassed. He's uh, born and bred and he's just he's so passionate about Clitheroe. He does coach tours to the River Valley as well. He's done this for 30 years now and he's brought in tens of thousands of visitors to the River Valley. What an amazing character he is. Her story really is a tale from the grave. Hello? Hello? Hello, S sorry, who is this? <laughs> One of Britain's Got Talent's most popular acts as well, he's from Clitheroe, that's Jasper Cherry. You must remember him, he's only 14 years old and he came on, got all the way through to the final with his magic tricks and he's absolutely brilliant. He's so talented in fact that he's on America's Got Talent this year. Sorry about that. No worries man, any time. <laughs> Another sports star from Clitheroe is Luke Blackledge, the former Commonwealth Super Middleweight Champion. And one of the most famous people, not only from Clitheroe, but from the north of England over the past few years, he's got to be Alfie Cookson. He's had millions and millions of views. In fact, his, uh, his video on BBC iPlayer, on BBC Three, that came out in 2018, it's the... It's the most popular video that the iPlayer's ever had for BBC Three, with millions and millions of views globally. Most people know him, most people have seen his film. If you've not seen his film, you've got to do that today. Go on YouTube, it's called Alfie the Odd Job Boy. My name's Alfie, I'm 18, I'm from Clovero, born and bred here. I've got a tandem push iron, and I go around doing odd jobs. Whatever you need doing, I'm the man for you. So we've got plenty of stars looking back from the 1950s right up to modern day. But just to give you a tip for the top, Jess Simpson, she's going to be the next big star from Clitheroe. She's just signed her first professional contract with Manchester United Ladies. She's already uh, on the fringes of playing for the Lionesses as well. She's only 18 years old, but this is the next superstar to come from Clitheroe. Glory, glory, man. We've already gained a lot of experience so far too, especially with England 2, England and 17s, England and 19s, dual reds with Burnley 2, plenty of experience there in minutes in the can. How important is it to have that development? It's super important like to experience playing with women from a different club and seeing like how they play and adapting to how they play obviously helps so much like and then you can come and bring that into your obviously your normal training with like United and everything so yeah, it's helped me with my development like a lot more. This is Clitheroe tip. You can uh, you can recycle everything here, from plastic bottles to electrical items, scrap metal, uh, just absolutely everything. Garden waste, and yeah, you're thinking I'm running out of ideas now, aren't you? You're thinking mm, scraping the barrel now, but this is what I've come to show you. This is our peacocks, and I've researched this. We are the only we're the only town in the entire country that has a big family of peacocks living at the local rubbish dump and uh, they're very very popular and visitors who've not seen them before they're just gobsmacked when they come up to the tip and they see these guys they're being very lazy today hiding away normally they're walking around in between the cars and showing the plumage and and making a racket as well but yeah we have peacocks here it's very posh in Clitheroe you know there's a new random object in the uh, Shovel. Let's have a look, see what it is. That's probably the most random one yet. There's plenty of great pubs in Clitheroe. This is one we've mentioned already. This is the Swan and Royal. We've also mentioned the New Inn. This is the Castle and that's the station. It used to be a very grand hotel there at one time. We've got Maxwell's, and that's the Beer Shack. So Bar, and that's the Book Inn. I think I know that guy who's dancing. And that's the Cocktail Bar, just next door. Dog and Partridge. Not sure what this one's called. And that's the Ale House, the White Lion. That's the Rose and Crown. Next door to it is the Conservative Club. And here we've got the Emporium and the Brown Cow. And that's Jungle. Last, but by no means least, is everybody's favourite, Key Street, the Cross Keys. So there's 20 pubs in the town centre, but don't worry, we've got more pubs in Clitheroe. 
These are the ones that are just outside the town centre. Yet it's for Bridge, fantastic pub just on the outskirts of town. It's a listed building as well. We've got the Lowmore Club, the British Legion, Tiger Lounge, the Royal Oak, Holmes Mill, Clitheroe Cricket Club, the Wagon and Horses, Ribblesdale Wanderers Cricket Club. I missed a few pubs that are in the town centre as well. We've got St Michael and St John's Old School Rooms. We've got Eskake, The Sauce Box, Solos, formerly known as Clitheroe Social Club. So surprisingly, when we had them all up, there's 33 pubs in Clitheroe. Nobody ever died of thirst in Clitheroe, but plenty of people have gone with cirrhosis of the liver. I've just put my muff on. Really? <laughs> Don't <live. laughs> So this is Bev. Everybody in Clitheroe knows Bev, boss of Key Street. Thanks. How long have you been here for, Bev? Long time, probably too long. No, I'm joking. Um, it opened in 96, was it? I wasn't here then, I came in 2000. So you've been here since 2000, 23 years? Yeah, Phil's been here a bit longer. <laughs> Just been doing, um, like looking at all the pubs in Clitheroe. Do you know how many pubs there are in Clitheroe? Do you know, I don't know. 20? You'll be surprised. 25? More. Really? How many? 30 odd. Honestly, I know I was dead surprised as well. Yeah, I know, I didn't think there were that many, but and there I, you go. And I've put on the video that yours is the most favourite one. <laughs> so what can people expect if they come to Key Street, Bev? My amazing customer service. No, I'm joking. Uh, we're just a bit different. We're not your box standard pub. We're very different. So I think that we're quirky. We've changed totally since um, Covid. Great clientele, we're family friendly, live music, you can do have private hire, you can have your functions, you can celebrate and just have a good time. And you have some great bands on, don't you? Lots of great bands, don't ask me to name all of them. <laughs> Can't remember. Oh, <laughs> too many to remember. They're famous people as well, been through these doors. Lots of famous people. I know, people. Yeah. I know. You're the most famous one though. Oh, is that what it is, Beverly Knight? Don't give me a song. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, Bev. You're very welcome, Steve. Thank you, cheers. You're very welcome. Now if that's horrific, get rid of it. No! We don't usually get much drama in Clitheroe, but I'm very pleased to announce we have some drama. This bus, don't know why it's stopped here, but with that other car parked and the double yellow lines there, this could potentially cause absolute nightmares in Clitheroe today. What if a truck wants to get past or something? I've been making this video thinking we're not going to have any drama whatsoever. You are broken down? to help you? Do you want me to give it a push? I can give you a push. Oh, yeah. It looks like it's very serious with this bus. The uh, the town crier has stood. Let's wait for the announcement. I'm joking of course. This isn't what the town crier is doing. He's not talking about a broken down bus. But we do have a town crier in Clitheroe and uh, this is a tradition that not many towns have got anymore. Town criers were the first local media really for any area. Uh, it dates back to the medieval times and we're very lucky in Clitheroe that we've still got our own town crier. He's called Roland Halewood and he's been in this post since 1984. So uh, very soon he'll be coming up to his 40th anniversary of being Clitheroe Town Crier and he's a much loved and familiar face around Clitheroe. So after Town Criers came local newspapers and this is the office of the Clitheroe Advertiser and Times. There is a joke here somewhere but I don't know what it is. From 1888 till 2015, this was the site of the Clitheroe Advertiser and Times, the local newspaper. And I do, I remember reading a few years ago that Clitheroe Advertiser had some of the best sales figures in the entire country for local news because Clitheroe, being where it is, it's kind of cut off from Blackburn, it's cut off from Accrington, cut off from Burnley. So there wasn't really a dedicated news service for the area. So every Thursday when the Clitheroe Advertiser came out, it was, uh, it was an absolute sellout. Everybody in the town bought it. It was the best way of catching up with the, the local news. Uh, reading the comment section in the newspaper, it was very, very popular. But as with all local newspapers now, the internet has just absolutely demolished the business model for, for local newspapers like this. So the Clitheroe Advertiser moved out of town in 2015. There is still a newspaper called the Clitheroe Advertiser and Times. And it's quite sad, really, that the internet has had such an impact on local newspapers that this office has had to move and, and share the Burnley Express office. Um, so we've lost the Clitheroe Advertiser here from 1888 until 2015. 
This is Clitheroe Library, and most people know this building. But one thing that's really interesting about it is it's actually three buildings all rolled into one. So you can see the main part there with the clock tower on the front, but then if you look just behind that building, that was the old town hall. And that was actually built in 1820, and that's where all the council business used to take place. And that bit that we can see right now, that is the original Moot Hall, and that was actually built in 1606. It's hard to believe that something has survived for that long, for over 400 years. But that section right there, that is the original Moot Hall, or what remains of it. And that used to be the, the main town hall for the whole area, long before the Ribble Valley existed. There was parts of Yorkshire involved and everything in, uh, back in the day. But yeah, that's Moot Hall. That's the old town hall in the middle there that was built in 1820. And then right at the very front, that's the uh, the more modern part. That's the Clitheroe Library, built in 1906. Now this door is fascinating. This is underneath the old Moot Hall, and that's actually the door to the dungeon. I kid you not, there's actually a, a prison cell just behind that door. And as this picture shows, that's what it looks like from inside. So if you were naughty back in the days, back when the witches were walking around, you'd end up in this dungeon. There's a good chance that the Pendle Witches would have walked past this door because that was here before they were carted off to Lancaster. So we're back round the other side now and this is the front entrance to Moot Hall and if you just look at the stonework there it's identical to the, uh, the stonework around the dungeon door. This is the front section, this is what we think of as Clitheroe Library and even though it's over a hundred years old it's still known as the modern part of Clitheroe Library and it was built by Andrew Carnegie, funds uh, donated by, uh, he was one of the richest men in the world at the turn of the uh, 19th century and he knew that the fastest way out of poverty in working class communities was education and he believed that if he funded local libraries and let the local community just come in and use it and borrow books and learn new things it would help them in the future and uh, he built over 2,000 around the UK in America and this is our Carnegie Library here in Clitheroe built in 1906 and some breaking news just coming in now the bus has been recovered um, so big celebration in town today in fact here come the red arrows now with the fly past well thank you very much for your time enjoying me for this uh, look around Clitheroe absolutely fantastic place the jewel in the crown of Lancashire if not Great Britain so if you've never been to Clitheroe before you must put it down on your list of things to do there's always something good happening around here absolutely breathtaking countryside in all directions and you join us at the top of the castle once again where we started but this is in 1968 when we had the Clitheroe gas works and as you can see it looked quite different then so cheers I'll see you on the next one Bye.